ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू भगवान श्री सच साई बाबा से हैप्पीनेस और सैटिस्फैक्शन और टेम्पररी थिंग्स बट ब्लिस इज इटर्नल स्वामी हु इज द ओशन ऑफ इटर्नल ब्लिस से लव इज माई फॉर्म Truth is my name. Bliss is my food. Swami says, "For my own joy, I created this universe from just one word. Until then, there was no one to know me. Immediately, mountains rose up, rivers started flowing, earth and sky, oceans." and water bodies were created the sun moon and deserts sprang up out of nothing to prove my existence then appeared all the living creatures of different shapes and sizes the animals birds talking and listening and finally I created man in my own image. He was given the first place, and my knowledge was placed in his mind. Millions of Sai devotees from all over the world are deriving joy from these words. Swami is the embodiment of bliss. Just his name is enough. to fill everyone's hearts with ananda his darshan sparshan and sambhashan confers on the devotees the highest bliss when sachidananda swarupa bhagwan gives darshan to his devotees the reward of bliss that is conferred on them elevates their minds and spirits the otherwise dry hearts blossom with the devotion and the devotees feel secure in his love and bhagwan starts taking shape and the devotees realize for themselves that the auspicious beginning of transformation is shaping their lives for the better well this is really a worth noting phenomenon for information i will repeat once again the process of surrendering to bhagwan's will starts taking shape and the devotees realize for themselves that the auspicious beginning of transformation is shaping their lives for the better when sri krishna came and blessed the gopis with his darshan sparshan and sambhashan the gopis used to experience an overpowering bliss we all experience the same phenomenon today why does this happen it is best to understand that in swami's own words swami says my heart is ever filled to the brim with blessings i have no ego i do not own anything this is my truth i am ever in bliss bliss and bliss alone bhagwan baba the embodiment of ananda always confers bliss on his devotees swami says i am pure love i can give you only one thing that is bliss through bliss i give you love to give peace courage and consolation to my devotees is my mission this means that my characteristics are unchanging they were present in earlier form too now only my manifest physical form is new the mere thought of swami's darshan makes the devotees happy 
and on getting his darshan, the waves of joy that sweep across them make them realize the unique spiritual power of the Supreme Master who alone can grant such bliss. Seeing the happiness on the faces of his devotees, Swami says, the bliss that emanates from the radiant faces of this huge crowd is my food. I live on that. When you are happy and content, I feel fresh. When your eyes twinkle with joy, my thirst is quenched. Your bliss is my nourishment. I only want my bliss to reach you and wish to share your joy. This mutual interaction is necessary. Here is a small story which narrates how Swami imparts bliss to his devotees. Swami, years ago, a family had gone for Swami's darshan. A little girl in the group felt that Swami should look at her. So, in darshan, this girl started shouting aloud, aloud, Swami, Swami, and Swami was quite far away. After hearing her voice, he looked at her and indicated her to keep quiet by putting his finger on the lips and saying, shh, shh. Then he walked a few steps further, picked up a few chocolates from the plate of a devotee and threw them towards her. They fell straight into her tiny hands. She counted them. There were six in number. The number of family members who had come for Swami's darshan were exactly six. The little girl was ecstatic and her happiness was beyond description. She shared the chocolates with all the six family members and doubled her joy. If such a small incident can give so much joy to the devotee, what will happen when Swami showers his unending grace in bigger doses? Just imagine all the negative qualities of the devotees drop away and pure eternal bliss remains. Swami says, to give bliss is my task. So not once or twice or thrice, but however many times you want, I'll come amongst you to shower this bliss. That's what Bhagavan said. The Bhagavad Gita expounds on four types of devotees. Ardha, seeking help. Ardhardhi, seeking wealth. Jignasu, seeking knowledge. And Jnani, seeking wisdom. Amongst these four, the first type, Artha, are the ones who seek divine help from the incarnations of God, who in turn nurtures them and takes them towards self-realization. In the present avatar, Sri Sat Sai Baba is the ultimate refuge to those who seek his help. Here is a story about Sri Suresh Dikshit, who was the nephew of an ardent devotee of Swami, Sri Panduranga Dikshit. Sri Suresh Dikshit suffered from sarcoma, a type of cancer of the leg, at an engage. He had very small children and he was the sole breadwinner of the family. The entire family was drowned in sorrow. Since Suresh's father was not alive, Sri Panduranga Dikshit was the head of the family. When he heard about his nephew's illness, he inquired with the doctors. They told him, in this illness, the leg has to be amputated. After that, the patient may survive from six months to one year. At the time, Suresh was in hospital and was undergoing chemotherapy. Swami visited Mumbai around the same time. Sri Panduranga Dikshit thought to himself, why not take Suresh 
to Dharma Kshetra. Accordingly, he took Suresh Dehar from the hospital. Since Dikshit was the president of Sai Samiti, he had attended some meetings, so he left Suresh with Srikant Savant, another Sai devotee, and Dr. Dharkar, Suresh's father in law, with instructions that he should be introduced to Swami. Swami, the ultimate refuge, came out from such a deep to give darshan and walked up straight to Suresh, to the one who knows all the mysteries of the universe. Does he need an introduction? Without asking Suresh anything, Swami said, cancel the cancer. From today, you'll start a new life, new birthday. And he materialized Vibhuti and asked Suresh to eat it. Due to this unexpected turn of events, Suresh forgot to take Swami's Badramaskar. This kept bothering him. But the compassionate Swami came back, lifted the robe slightly and asked Suresh to take Padramaskar. After this incident, Suresh recovered very rapidly. All the reports were normal and by Swami's grace, his life was restored to normalcy. This is just one example. There will be many known and unknown devotees who have found their refuge in Swami and who has freed them from distress. In Marathi, there is a proverb which says, one does not have anybody in this world, he has God. God is the guardian of every living being in this world. So, in fact, nobody is a destitute. But when human beings neglect such souls, they develop a feeling that they are orphans. Bhagavan Baba's name is Sai Baba. Itself suggests that he is the Divine Mother and Father. He nurtures the world and looks after those who are helpless. One incident in this context, from a Shirdi incarnation, people from all walks of life used to come to Shirdi Sainath for refuge from rich to poor, ailing and healthy. There were all types of devotees. Amongst these, there is one, Bhagoji Shinde. As an effect of his past karmas, he suffered from leprosy and was estranged from his family. This Bhagoji came to Sainath to seek his refuge, and Sainath, who is Anadhanath, the guardian of the destitute, welcomed him. Sai used to personally clean Bhagoji's wounds, apply oil and turmeric on them and bandage them daily. While partaking food, he would feed him from his own share. Every morning, he would allow Bhagoji to massage him and press his feet. And the only reason for this was to make Bhagoji happy. This went on for many years. Bhagoji, who had been orphaned by the world, God himself took him close and became the guardian. Now tell me, who is an orphan? No one is an orphan. No one. Sai is the second incarnation of Sri Satya Sai is always Anantanada. Anathanada, Anathanada. Right from the childhood, he always helped the poor and the downtrodden, gave them food and clothes, and served them all the time. Later, this was transformed into Narayan Seva. Now Swami's devotees from all over the world participate in this Seva. Since the Satyasai Sevadal came into existence, every active worker has got involved in serving others and thinking himself to be blessed.
for getting this opportunity. Whenever there is a natural calamity, Swami's devotees from all over the world lend a helping hand to all those who have suffered by becoming instruments in the divine hands. Here is a story from foreign shores. A lady would have Swami from abroad was always involved in feeding and helping the poor and the downtrodden. Once due to heavy rains and floods, she was unable to visit a particular area. During those eight days, she continuously invoked Swami and prayed to him to lack, to look after those helpless people. She was very much concerned about their well-being. After eight days, the situation eased and it became possible for her to visit that place. She carried food, medicines, along with Swami's photographs and Vibhuti packets to distribute among the people. On reaching there, she realized that everyone was safe and secure. She started distributing food packets and Swami's photographs and noticed that on seeing the photographs, all those persons started discussing among themselves. When she inquired, she was told that in her absence, the person from the photograph used to come and give food and medicines to all of them. They thought him to be her assistant helper. On hearing this, she was choked with emotion. She told them about Swami and all of them offered their heartfelt gratitude to Anathanata Sri Satchasai, the only refuge to the forlorn. There are so many incidents that indicate that Swami acted in their place, played their role. The savior of this world, Bhagwan Baba, is constantly engaged in helping the helpless. By giving them asylum, he steadies their life. He always tells his devotees, help those in distress. They are the only way to reach God. Seva creates love for God in your minds. In this constant help of devotees, Bhagavan Baba is not bound by place or time. A middle-aged lady from San Diego, America, lived in an apartment in a, in a tall skyscraper all by herself. She had arthritis and sometimes suffered excruciating pain. Once at 11 o'clock at night, she started feeling acute pain. The agony was so unbearable and she started screaming aloud, Is anyone there? Is anyone there? Can someone relieve me from this pain? Suddenly she noticed that Swami was standing next to her bedside. He patted her gently on her head and said, Why are you wailing so loudly? I am right here. And slowly the lady was relieved of her pain. While commenting on this episode, Sri Kasturi says, Everyone needs to know that we are never alone. Somebody is always with us, although we may not be aware of his name and address. Not only Swami, but by his inspiration, his devotees also help, help those who are needy and helpless. And uh, here is an enlightening episode. A person belonging to the lower strata of society, residing at Ratnagiri of Maharashtra, fell ill. Doctors diagnosed it to be heart disease. He was advised to go to Mumbai for treatment. Somehow he managed to collect some funds and got himself checked in a municipal hospital in Mumbai. They confirmed the diagnosis but told him that the hospital did not have any facility for an open heart surgery. The man was confused and did not know what to do Disappointed, he left for his hometown. In the train, he met a person who was a Sai devotee. 
as they talked he narrated his sad story to the co traveler the companion told him don't worry in sri satya sai baba's hospital all types of heart surgeries are performed and that too completely free of cost the man was happy at last there was a ray of hope on reaching ratnagiri he tried to try to find some information about the hospital but no one seemed to be aware of it but he did manage to get one bit of information he got the address of sai samiti at ratnagiri as soon as he got this piece of news he went and met the concerned office bearers they guided him about the whole procedure and also paid towards his traveling expenses he went to puttaparthi with a lot of hope a few days later he returned home with a broken heart he met the office bearers and shared his sorrowful story with them at the puttaparthi hospital all the diagnostic tests have revealed that he had defective heart walls and they need to be replaced but he was also told that for the time being the surgeries for replacement of heart valves had been discontinued it seems the patients who had undergone the surgery earlier did not return for a regular post operative checkup checkup yes which is very vital in this surgery so this facility had been temporarily discontinued the patient was really disappointed but the office bearers of the samiti did not give up hope they got in touch with some sai devotees and ngos in mumbai and managed to raise some financial help they themselves added some more to this amount and sent this patient to mumbai once again he got admitted to kim hospital all the necessary tests were carried out and the date and the time for the surgery was fixed and on the day of the surgery something most unexpected happened a ward boy came to the patient and started telling him you cannot get operated here leave the hospital immediately now the patient was nervous <coughs> the ward boy started pulling him out of his bed the man was in tears and just then as if god had sent an angel a devotee from swami reached there he knew about the surgery so he had come to visit the patient but when he observed the situation he lost his temper he rebuked rebuked the ward boy and immediately met the hospital dean everything was settled the surgery went off successfully and the patient recovered his health what if the sai devotee had not reached the hospital at that moment he reached there in the nick of time only by swami's inspiration and offered his seva as madhava seva service to god who ever helps who are helpless and sad know that he is a sadhu a good man recognize him as god that's what swami said we'll meet again thank you for your time